What's up guys, Hotra Frontier back at it again with another video. And in this video guys, we're gonna be talking about the best decks post the ban list, of course. So you guys know, with the banning of cards like Barone and Borlo Savage Dragon, a lot of decks are more susceptible to getting hit with Nibiru and for it to actually go through with it, of course. So with that in mind, I kind of wanted to do a uh, tier list video that kind of depicts and sees where each deck would go based on that criteria. So of course we have best decks, we have the next best thing, of course, we have high potential, we have experienced pilot and copium. So let's get started right away. And what we have right here, the first deck here is actually Labyrinths. So Labyrinths, personally, I feel like in terms of like getting affected by Nibiru, it doesn't affect it too much, really. I would actually put this at high potential. Also because in my mind, Labyrinths haven't really gotten a tier zero format like tier limits and cash Tira, And I know eventually it, it will be their time. Plus, they have some really powerful trap cards that haven't really been fully utilized, I, in my opinion at least, in this current meta. Next up guys, we have Voiceless Voice, and in my opinion, I believe that Voiceless Voice could be a top deck this format for so many reasons. One, it did not get hit on the balance whatsoever. Two, it usually just powers through hand traps and still makes a very strong board. And they are getting new support in the new core set, of course, Legacy of Destruction, that will kind of increase the uh, power of the deck already. So a lot of factors that will kind of make this deck a very, very solid uh, top deck tier level here. Uh, but of course, guys, if you have any other questions or even comments, let me know down below in the comment section, of course. Let's move on. Let's go great into the uh, Chimera deck. And personally, I feel like it's a deck that hasn't had as much uh, representation or at least as much um, exposure in the meta. I feel like it's just kind of missing a little more support to kind of make it crazy. We really haven't gotten too many Chimera cards, to be honest, in the TCG. So we kind of need to wait and see how the deck develops later on. But for right now, I would actually kind of put it at Experienced Pilot. I'm going to demote it a little bit only because we don't have all the cards. And it is a whole new um, archetype, which is really kind of cool to see with the Illusionist stuff, of course. But um, hopefully in the future, we'll see more from this strategy. Moving on, guys, to Magic Specters, which I want to put higher on the list, but right now I'm going to say Experience Pilot. Reason being is that, you know, being a pendulum based strategy is tough right now because they still follow the old rules in terms of you have to special uh, pendulum summon monsters from the extra deck to the link zones. So it's difficult in that regard. Plus, I mean, it's just harder in terms of uh, facing trying to summon under Nibiru. It's really near impossible. And I feel like maybe with some further pendulum support later down the line we could change that but for right now it's definitely an experienced pilot deck and i do wish it the best because honestly it's an amazing pendulum strategy but moving on guys we do have next up of course fire kings and fire kings is in my opinion a best deck this format so not only because it's the year of fire but fire kings just does so much more in terms of the uh inversing different decks in the meta Plus, when you uh, compare it to a deck like Simple Spoils, Simple Spoils did lose a lot, and it just kind of made, in my opinion, of course, uh, Fire Kings a stronger contender for the Year of Fire. I think it is one of the best strategies we have in terms of fire-based strategies in the current meta. Going on to our next one, guys, we do have Heroes. Now, Heroes, for me, I'm going to actually put it at a higher tier instead of Experienced Pilot. I usually put it there, but, you know, with Malicious at 3, a lot of whole new opportunities, of course, are opening up. And we have been seeing a lot of uh, top deck placements in regionals with heroes too. So that's always great to see, especially in 2024. And they have, they always get a lot of support. And usually they, the trend is they get continued support because it's legacy support. So hopefully we'll see a first place somewhere, right? That is the dream. But uh, moving on guys, we have flu and flu for me would either have to be best deck or top of uh, the next best thing. And the reason being is that, again, it's a deck that can play underneath Nibiru, and with the banning of Barone and Warlord Savage Dragon, it does very well against uh, decks that will now prioritize cards like SP Little Knight and other uh, Link monsters in the extra deck, of course. So it's a solid, like, anti-meta deck. You guys already know it didn't get hit. I don't think it will get hit again at all in the ban list. So. I am rooting for flu. Okay, that's that's my um, my vote. I'm rooting for flu. Next up, guys, we do have Orcus, and Orcus, I'm actually gonna put it has a lot of potential because Orcus not only got the Armageddon Knight to two, it finally got the uh, of course the Orcus 
uh, Harpoor, Hor Hor Harpoor, back to three, which is great because with the uh, last few banlists, I mean, bringing it to two was nice, but at the same time, just give it to us at three, right? At that point. So it's nice to finally see that. And actually, it was at one, but now it is at three, which is really good for the strategy. We're hoping to see a top tier um, deck profile, hopefully for you guys later on. If you do want to see that, let me know down below. But um, have a lot of hope for Orcus. And, you know, Toss Format is back, so hey, anything can happen, right? Moving on, guys, to our next deck here, we have Branded. And Branded, I'm going to put the next best thing. Honestly, it's another deck where I feel like it has so much representation, but it just never really gets there. And I think Konami is sort of pushing for that type of success. So I think with the ban list currently, it is sort of like, all right, you know, because Thunder Dragon can actually sort of be mixed with it. At the same time, you can also mix the um, Arch Nemesis, uh, of course, monster with this too. So a lot of potential with Branded in terms of that. And I can't wait to see where that kind of forms Branded this format, personally. Moving on to our next one, guys. We do have Goblin Biker. I might have to put this a Copium. Now, Gob Goblin Biker is not a bad deck, but in terms of new support is getting from Legacy of uh, Destruction, it just doesn't really compare to all the other decks currently out right now. And I feel like it just needs more support to kind of make it like really, really broken. Now you can mix this with different decks and it can be really, really good, especially they have a lot of uh, one hand combos with it, which are nice, but I feel like the underlying effects of the monsters are a little underwhelming and they could be much better. And they might be later on, of course, going on to Sky Striker. I'm going to put Sky Striker here, but listen, all right, I already know Engage is gonna get hit again. We already know that's gonna happen, okay? The reason they even hit Engage in the first place was because they mixed it with Orcus and that just went out of control and they had to get rid of it. <laughs> so I know in some shape or form, Engage is getting hit again. So get all that out of your system again, okay? I'm sorry, Sky Trigger players, pure uh, Sky Trigger players, or people who are mixing it in engines, do as much as you want, but I know that card's getting hit again, okay? That's just how it always goes. But um, don't listen to me. All right, hopefully it doesn't get hit, right? Anyway, <laughs> we'll see what happens, but it's nice to see Sky Striker at, I guess you would say, full power. They are getting more support later on, so maybe that is another reason why cards like Engage are back. So we'll only see with time as time goes on, of course. Going on to Tier Limits. Tier Limits. I will actually put this here as well. So Tier Limit... It's a deck that they've hit to the ground, but it's still going. Even in the OCG, there are so many hits on Tier Limit, and Tier Limit is still, you know, going to the top tables. It's an insane strategy. You just can't kill it, right? Even uh, post Legacy of Destruction, Lightsworn's adding Tier Limit in. So you know, it's just it's it's crazy. It's a crazy deck, and um, I think with these little like unlimits and semi limits, it's slowly kind of giving Tier Limit more. Um, more legs kind of bringing it's like weight back into onto the table of course and into the meta i wouldn't be surprised if we saw another like top uh <laughs> top performing deck with tier limits a top placement at a regional or even a ycs level eventually we'll see what happens with tier limit going on to our next pick here we have salmon great and not the best deck in terms of the year of fire but actually one of the it's a top contender definitely like a top three or four deck and for that reason i would actually put it here because uh salmon great is a deck that has proven itself to be somewhat Nimbiru proof, and that is an important factor as well. Now, remember, every deck here could just play cross out, but you also need to be able to kind of play underneath Nimbiru or just kind of know how to work around it. And Salamagrate has proved that many, many of times. So, going on to our next pick here, we have Sprite. And Sprite, I'm gonna put it here for now. It might be a wild take, but check it out, right? Thunder, Thunder, Thunder Dragon. <laughs> and also, you know, a lot of the other decks here too can play the Arch Nemesis card, Protos. And as long as you can run a specific engine in any of your decks, you can pretty much search that. Or even be able to summon Thunder Dragon. So you do have to have that kind of factor in as well when you're um, making these decisions. But Sprite, I would be very, very curious to see a deck list based on that. And I actually might create a deck list very soon to show you guys how broken Sprite can be again. So definitely look forward to that. Next up, guys, we have Unchained. And Unchained, 
I might be underperforming this format. I'm not too sure. I would actually put it at experience pilot just because, you know, Shavara to uh, one still is kind of hurting the strategy. But at the same time, the deck is still broken. So um, I would kind of put it here for now. We'll see what happens as the format develops, of course. Going on to Horus. Horus is in an interesting spot. I kind of want to put it Copium, but at the same time, I might actually just put it Experienced Pilot. Actually, you know, honestly, if I'm thinking Experienced Pilot, I might as well just put it Copium for now. Anti-Meta itself is a little iffy right now. You want to be more of a, like, Flunderies Anti-Meta than just Horus and just Set 5, because it is going to be a little harder. Decks are going to be more creative in how they make their end boards, and that will affect anti-meta decks like Horus. But in my opinion, I think Flu is a much stronger anti-meta deck. Now, if we're talking about Horus with like Thunder Dragon or other type of decks, um, then that's a different, you know, situation, of course. But just pure Horus, like anti-meta, I would put it at Copium. Definitely above Goblin Biker. It has more potential than that, but um, just like this, we'll, we'll definitely just leave it like there and see what happens. Going on to our next pick, which is, of course, Centurion. And Centurion, currently, I would put Experience Pilot. Now, it's at a very interesting spot because, of course, it does get more support after uh, Legacy of Darkness comes, uh, Destruction comes out. But currently, the deck is struggling. And with the current end board it makes, I feel like it's not enough at the current moment. But only time will tell, of course, guys. Uh, next up, we have Pearly and Pearly is the next best thing i mean it did get a uh card from the limited to semi-limited section which is nice they're slowly giving it back power and it is an imperial proof which is a, a very important factor in the current game going on to our next pick here which is cash tira the question is is cash tira better than tira then i mean technically because cash tira has less hits plus fenrir is still at three which is kind of crazy um and this is more favorably a deck that, of course, does play, uh, it can play D-Shifter, which is very nice, of course. Um, you do have to be careful when you play D-Shifter in this format because Bursting Thunder Dragon, that actually helps the deck, so you have to be very careful. But other than that, I think Castier has a better chance than Tier Limit at the current moment, but we'll only see, of course. Um, next is Menadium, Menadium. I'll put this here, Experience Pilot, because losing Barone plus Warlord Savage Dragon really hurts the deck. But, but guys, you could technically still play the Infernal uh, Flame Banshee. Two level fours, you summon that. You can go ahead and search the Nemesis Flag. And from there, you can go and get the Protos, which is really nice. Or you can go and try to summon Thunder Dragon Colossus. So there are a lot of different ways you can go with that. But again, a lot of other decks will be copying that. So it might be harder. It's not more unique to just Monodium. It's really any deck that can make two level fours on the field. Um, but I think maybe with some further support with, for uh, Monadium, I don't think that's it for the support it's getting. It could be more broken. We'll only see, of course. Um, going on to our next pick here, we do have Sinful Spoils, the rest of the, of course, Year of Fire. And I would kind of say it's the next best thing. Losing um link rebo does hurt the deck a little bit but that's kind of why it is still a broken strategy and it can you can still play without playing Borderlands of savage dragon and barone it's still very broken but compared to something like fire king i feel like fire king is at a much higher level currently in the meta going on to our next pick here guys we have of course thunder dragons and thunder dragons i'm gonna actually put that it takes an experienced pilot at the current moment only because this deck has been out for a while and of course now with thunder dragon colossus coming back to one and other decks mimicking it it doesn't make it as strong but at the same time playing d shifter in the deck is very very good and can interrupt other strategies while boosting your own consistency so for that reason i'm going to put it here but i hope to see the deck actually go up further as we go through this meta game next up we have rescue ace and I kind of feel like Rescue Ace would be below Salmon Gray at this point, and I would actually put it at Experience Pilot. It does have a, you know, the difficulty, of course, with the Airlifter still at one. If that was off, I think easily it could be like the next best thing. But currently, right now, it should stay here. Finally, guys, second to last, we have Runic, and Runic um, might actually, I would say, has a huge potential. You can mix this with so many different types of strategies, and 
the fact that you can just mess with your opponent and depending on what strategy of course you're mixing it with you have built-in protections from other engines too to protect your runic stuff or your runic stuff to protect whatever other engine you're playing is very strong in the metagame uh, i wouldn't underestimate it at all and uh they haven't really hit runic like what runic found the two yeah that, that was a meme that was a meme so i don't think they're hitting it anytime soon but we'll see um very strong engine to add onto any strategy that can of course play it and finally guys last but not least we have sword soul sword swole and for that reason i'm actually going to put it at experience pilot because sword soul has had a lot of problems in the past but the difference now with the ban list adding protos to your strategy like summoning it and activating it makes the deck a lot stronger but i think the deck needs a little more in terms of that and it is susceptible to nimbiru so a lot of things need to be considered if you are going to try to play sword soul this format but of course guys that is it for the um, best decks tier list post ban list if you guys like the video let me know down below and of course if you guys didn't like it also let me know down below if you guys like the video make sure to give it a huge like comment down below if you guys enjoy the list or not and if you guys are not subscribed to the channel what are you doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button turn on the notification bell so you're updated the moment i upload new videos but guys that's it for me hope you have a great rest of your day or night and i'll catch you in the next video peace